again to the quarterly IT All Staff Meeting, live from San Bernardino, home of the original McDonald's. And now, here's our Big Mac, George Akiyama. You know, I gotta really hand it to these guys. Every time there's a new introduction, you know, and every time I gotta live with some nickname for an entire quarter. <laughs> but uh, thank you for that. And, and uh, welcome everybody to uh, District 8 San Bernardino. As you heard in the introduction, it's the original McDonald's. So it's the original location where the McDonald's franchise started. Certainly it's also one of the, uh, the largest districts that we have. And for us, we've got an exciting agenda. You know, certainly we're lucky to have a very VIP guest starting with us. And then uh, in addition to that, you're gonna learn a little bit more about the D8 IT staff. We've got a great video as always. And then we've got some updates from myself, and the various uh, division chiefs in IT. There was always time for Q&A, and so the Ask George line is open. Ron Clemens is dutifully checking the Ask George line. We're gonna try to get as many questions as we can, but I guarantee if we don't get the questions on air, we'll definitely get back to you an email. With that, I'd like to introduce the District Director, John Belinsky. John, how are you doing? Good, I'm doing good. How are you doing, George? Fantastic. Thanks for making time today. I know you're a really busy guy. So I have to correct you. Okay. Because you said one of the biggest. No. <laughs> district 8 is the biggest, largest district in the state of California. Larger than, if you combine, uh, Riverside and San Bernardino counties, larger than 11 states in the wow. union. Wow, fantastic. So certainly a great responsibility for you. And I know... Uh, you've been up and down Caltrans. You've had other responsibilities. Uh, D1, you were district director in D2 as yes, well. Yes. You're NorCal. You were a NorCal guy. I think I saw Humboldt I, State. Yeah, I went to Humboldt State. I grew up in Southern California in San oh, Diego County. Okay. And I thought I would escape to Northern California. And then they pulled you back in. But I'm being drugged back down here. All right. Which I love it. I love All right. it. Fantastic. I've also noticed you've, you've got a lot of varied hobbies. You know, athletic guy, right? No, you, you do a lot of sports, cycling, uh, uh, racquetball? Or? Racquetball. I have backed off on racquetball because okay. of my back, All right. which is okay. All right. I love it. All right. Well, I'm not going to go right to the age jokes. I'm going to save yeah, that for later. Don't do the age stuff. All right. But also woodworking. W yes. All right. So what, what do, you, do you, are you currently on a project? Are you working no, on the home? Actually, or what, right now, we bought a house about two years ago here, and I'm building my ultimate shop. Oh. So I'm in the process of that. I'm getting that completed. I should have that done in the next month or so. It, will that be, is that like the third bay in the garage or is that, do you have like no, a No, it's room? like a separate building. No way, Entirely. you're kidding. Yes. yes. Well, you know, uh, we're going to talk about a residence here, I think, on our quiz later. And that, maybe that's related to the new house you just bought. Maybe. So maybe. we'll see. We'll find out more about that on the quiz. Can you, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what's happening in D8? So District 8, what an exciting place. Um, like I mentioned, I got here. Um, not too long ago, about three and a half years. Um, and I've been just impressed with the, one, the staff. Um, a hard work and dedicated people, and I'm just loving being part of this District 8 family. Um, we also have really good working relationships with our partners. Um, each county has a tax measure, so there's contribution of funding for transportation projects from our local partners. So there's a lot of work, a lot of activity taking place, a lot of projects planned for the future, a lot of projects being constructed now, a lot of projects that um, have been developed and completed over the last several years. Oh, thank you. I, I know you've got a lot going on. Uh, I also know you're, I see you as a technology guy, because uh, first off, you, I think you jumped right on the, the Surface Pro yes. right? and uh, I think as an organization, we took a chance on those and, and we're- yeah. We're gonna some, sometimes we make mistakes, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to put that okay. in the mistake category because, you know, okay. I will say fail forward. Yes, <laughs> right? I would So agree. that's one of those. I but then I, recently I saw you with a new HP Elite book. Yes, and I love it. I love it. Right. That should be the standard. That is, the, yeah, that is absolutely the standard moving forward. And, uh, but I appreciate that you're willing to try new things and move forward, right, and, and, you know, adjust and adapt and pivot, right, from the Surface Pro to the Elite Book. So, uh, so thank you for your leadership there. Well, and I got to give credit to the District yep. 8. I call them part of my District 8 family, the District 8 IT staff, yep. because they supported every, me every step of the way. Awesome. Um, even through the, uh, the problems I had with the Surface Pro mm -hmm. um, and now with the new computer systems that we have. 
Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with you. Certainly, uh, Joe and the team here, I got to tell you, uh, they're very dynamic. They're very customer service focused. And uh, I would say they're one of the happiest bunches that, that we have from an IT district perspective. So I, I really attribute that to the leadership here. So thank you for that. Well, thank you. And thank you for allowing us to, to come in and have the show in your oh, district. Oh, you bet. Anytime. All right. Well, I'm going to take up on that then. We'll be okay. back. All Good. Right. Good. You know, so this part of the show, we actually do a little quiz. So uh, are, you, are you up for a little quiz around uh, yeah. D8? Our competitor for you today is Mike Wynn. Do you know Mike? Yes, I do. John, good morning. How are you? How are you doing? <laughs> okay, so we have Inland Empire Regional Chamber of Commerce. And, and Internet Explorer. That's right. So, you know, there are actually two IEs, right? So for us in IT, whenever we say IE, we're thinking Internet Explorer. But for Southern California, we're talking Inland Empire, right? Which is uh, <laughs> absolutely, you're already ahead of the game. Mike's still catching up. He doesn't know it which side's which. It'll take you. him a little while. It'll take him a little while? Well, he's from headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. All right. This you know, is not fair, George. You know, these district directors, they're pretty smart. You know, you put me up against, you know, Amber G last time I got killed. This guy I was know. Too, so take it easy on me, will yeah. you? Yeah. You know, we're. We're the, we're the guests, right? We're the guests in the house. So, so I will be nice. Try to throw a couple of mics away, right? Okay. That's, all I'm, all that's right. all I'm asking. <laughs> all right, so we're going to do Inland Empire versus Internet Explorer. You guys ready to start? And this gets back to your new house. So I'm going to start with the first question. Okay. So you've got to answer either Inland Empire or Internet Explorer. Bing's, I.E. or I.E. I.E. or I.E. That's right. Bing's house. Bing's house. Wow. You know, you are taking it easy on Mike. I appreciate that. Built in 1957, the over 6,000 square foot home was once known as the Rat Pack party scene. It's currently listed at $4.85 million. Now the, uh, and that's part of the house. Now you talked about getting a new yeah, house. Yeah, so when I bought this house. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <Yeah. laughs> And then, as she said, the wood shop's a totally different structure, right? So, <laughs> did you have to buy the adjacent uh, mansion as well? Just oh, to no, do the wood no, shop? I fit it all on. You fit it all? Okay. Yeah. That's nice. I appreciate your conservatism with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, certainly, uh, Bing Crosby, and many of you in the audience may not know him. I certainly, it's kind of more from my era, but uh, his home is here in the Inland Empire in 6,000 square feet, uh, listed for $4.85 million. If any of you are shopping, uh, I can help you with a good realtor. Uh, Internet Explorers, Bing is uh, Microsoft's internet search engine unveiled in 2009. I'll tell you, Microsoft actually started with a different term. Instead of calling it Bing, they were gonna call it Bang. Because the thinking is, um, you know, they wanted something to come to your mind when you had a great idea. So uh, they eventually settled on Bing. I think that's a much better um, solution than Bang. So well, I was right also. You're always right, John, okay, in my okay. book. You're always right. <laughs> So, so for, so for those of you uh, keeping score at home, John's got 1,000 points and Mike's got zero. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys ready for the next question? Sure. Yeah. Traffic has declined over, over 50%. Boom. Wow. Great, uh, great responses. You guys both got it right, but I'm sorry, Mike. Man, you've got to pick up your speed here. because John's <laughs> all over you. In an explorer, traffic has declined from a high of nearly 70% in 2009, I think it launched in 2009, to about 8% today. So it's, it's a serious downturn. Now I would say the, the traffic here though, in the Inland Empire, I don't think we're seeing that decline. Uh, no. no. All right, question, uh, and so I'm sorry Mike. Now John's up to 2,000 points. So you gotta, you gotta headquarters man, <laughs> all right. Next Headquarters question. Pride. All right, all right <laughs> let's, let's see. All right. Uh, plenty of soul shoppers. Soul. Boom. Oh, 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 oh. You guys have uh, final answers? I'm looking final for final answers. answers. Final answers. All right. Man, come on, brother. I got to do it. Here's, here's, let me give you some answers. No. All right. I need a phone to call you need a friend. Phone, phone a friend. All right. There we go. Um, Internet Explorer. So you got it, John? Well yeah. done. South Korean government online banking system relies on ActiveX control and therefore requires the use of Internet Explorer. To do business with a Korean e-commerce suite, customers must run IE. 
Now, shopping's a lot easier here in the Inland Empire. All you need is really a set of comfortable shoes. There's a lot of access. I think we are able to hit some of those last night, a couple of nice restaurants. And uh, I think there, there's a shopping center close by, is there? Oh, yeah, there's plenty. There's nope. plenty of them around. All right. Don't tell my wife. She'll be <laughs> down here. That's not good. All right, next question. It's a bug's life. It's a bug's life. Which one is it? Is it Inland Empire or IE? Wow. Bugs continue to, uh, you're getting faster, Mike, but you were only three seconds off that time. So that's, that's <laughs> gotten really good. Bugs continue to plague Internet Explorer, usually leading the list on Patch Tuesday. And now for the infrastructure folks, you guys have been doing a lot of uh, Patch Tuesdays and Patching Weekends, and I really do appreciate that. Carl appreciates that from a security perspective. Um, but it's not just IE, the Inland Empire, as every kind of uh, geographic area also has its uh, share of bugs. Tarantulas, tarantula hawks, camel spiders, centipedes, and scorpions. You know, myself, I think the tarantula hawk is pretty cool. Can you imagine that? So a wasp that attacks tarantulas. tarantulas. Crazy. Mm. So who knew that? We'll be doing the uh, environmental tour later. All right. Next question. Mike, here we go. You ready? I'm ready. You ready? All right. I'm here ready. we go. Prime Amazon location. Inland Empire. Yeah. All right, all right, nice job, nice job. Good I got to go with a show. Good, good job, Mike. I appreciate you getting there. Whoo! The Inland Empire. Uh, so you guys have got an uh, Amazon Prime. Yep. Down here, warehouse. Warehouse. Fantastic. Uh, We're known for warehouses. This is the warehouse district. Yeah. This isn't the only warehouse we have in the Inland oh. Empire. Oh. Are there uh, other There's large? A significant number of right. warehouses. Fantastic. So we're considered the inland port. So oh, port of Los Angeles. Port of Long Beach. Yep. Uh, most of the goods are delivered there from um, elsewhere in the world. Oh. And those, a majority of that gets transferred through the Inland Empire or to the Inland Empire to warehouses, which they actually call fulfillment centers. Yes. In NorCal, I think Amazon's got one in Tracy or something, but I know Amazon's yes. putting a lot of fulfillment centers around. Yep. And they get those pickers, right? Those, those folks who've got to. Yeah. Yeah, so Mike, yeah. let's not look at, because that's all speed related, so. <laughs> that's, that's so, good. so certainly you're right, John, as always, the Inland Empire has been chosen by the online retail giant for distribution centers in San Bernardino and Moreno Valley, employing more than 3,000 workers. So a huge, uh, huge employer in the area. Inland Empire, or Internet Explorer, not so much. So not doing that well on that front. All right, you guys ready for a little acronym soup? Here we Let's go. go. Let's ne do it. Yeah. All right, next question. IT guys love acronym soup. So Mike, I, we tailored this for you, man. I'm just giving you a hint. Are you ready? Alt J, CVSS, DMM, and SZA. What do you, what do you guys think? Yeah. Collaboration, I like collaboration. Yeah. Yeah. All right, nice answer. Not the right answer, but nice <laughs> answer. <laughs> It is actually, uh, and so this, this, may, this question may not have been um, fair to you guys from a demographic perspective. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> uh, this, this, goes with the, <laughs> this goes with the back thing, man. This goes with the back thing. Uh, and I'm going to struggle with this, honestly, with you, with this well, too. Well, who from the audience knows what you're talking about? Who? Did, okay, well, okay. Did you go? Did you go? It's too expensive. Uh, how much is it? No way, really? Holy smokes. Hey man, John knows a lot of guys. You should have hit him up because I'm sure <laughs> he can get you in somewhere. So, yeah. so what we're talking about, these, uh, these are music acts who performed at the 2018, is it Cho Chochala? Coachella? Coachella. Coachella. See, I'm, I, the demographic's bad for me too. I'm way back in the day. At uh, the Coachella Valley Music uh, and Arts Festival in Indio, I also hear after Coachella, there's actually a country western one that goes Stagecoach. Stagecoach. Yeah. And I hear that's equally sized or, or yeah. pretty large Maybe as well. not quite as big. Um, it's geared towards the older crowd. So also, you, I'm in. You might fit I, in. I'm in. You I might, might fit, fit right in. in there. All right, all right. <laughs> cool. Do you, do you think that they're old enough for me? Or do you, no? The walkers or what? No? <laughs> all, right, all, right. all right, here we go. Now, this one's, this one's more up my alley. Are you ready? Inland Empire or Internet Explorer? Need for speed. Boom. Dude, you are right there. You're a half second behind now. You're picking You're up speed. Good. You're doing good, Mike. You're just like Marysville. So, Inland Empire, 
is home to the NASCAR's Auto Club Speedway in Fontana, where speeds can reach in excess of 200 miles an hour in Fontana. So there we are, great NASCAR track. Um, I don't know if the freeways here accommodate those speeds or not. Um, well, people try, I'll tell you <laughs> what. There's no doubt about it. If you drive on the freeways in Inland Empire, you will see right. people trying to drive that speed. Wow, crazy. I will not do it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and you know, speed, Internet Explorer, uh, not so much. And you know, here, here we've got some memes about, i.e., trying to load faster. What we are, we're browsers. What we want, faster internet, and when do we want it? And they're still trying to load the browser. So I use not the fastest browser. All right, more more acronyms. Are you guys ready, Mike? Dude, this is all you. Are you ready? You're on it. All right. Pressure. OBP plus SLG equals O. Wow, dude, you are on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Ask him if he knows what. Yeah, he yeah. Means. What is, yeah. Can you give me one of those? What, what is really OBP? Mean? Some baseball stats. Sam, some baseball stats. Some baseball stats. Do you have a? Do, are you, do you have an earplug? Is somebody giving you the answers? Because I know I'm looking for. Thanks, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Mike. You got that one. Um, that's the formula to calculate on base plus slugging in baseball. The Inland Empire is home to the Anaheim Angels Class A affiliate baseball team called the Inland Empire 66ers. Who is this guy? That's is number 27. Who is that? Mike Trout. Mike Trout. Wow, nicely done. Mike, you, you knew that because you fought a lot of baseball, right? Not at all. Not at all? <laughs> all right. All right, last one for all the marbles, all right? So I think it's, I don't know, it's probably a million points to zero. No, no, you got one. I'm going to say a million to a thousand. So here we Have go. Have mercy you, on me. You guys ready? <laughs> last one. Welcome to the edge. Internet Explorer or Inland Empire? Wow, you guys both said Inland Empire, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, this will be interesting because my statisticians <laughs> back home tell me it's Internet Explorer. In 2013, Microsoft introduced a SQL to IE called Microsoft Edge, which really hasn't been successful. So I say it is the Inland Empire yeah. because have you driven on the rim of the world highway? We, we have That not. is considered the That's edge. That's considered the edge? That's well, the edge of the world. You know, maybe and it's I'll right here in, in the Inland Empire. Do, uh, we're going to have to give that shot. I think we've got a little time before the airport. I will yeah. tell you this. Uh, the division chiefs always drive me to the edge. I, so don't, I don't doubt that. I don't doubt that. So I, I, I have that me. same issue with my staff. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it'll be a very natural experience. <laughs> but, uh, but thank you both for participating. And John, you're the winner. You, you nailed, oh, I will say, nine man. out of ten questions. We have a little Thanks, prize John. for you, too. Thank you. We got a little coffee for you. Uh, okay, so I, get, I chew on these? You chew on those, okay. that's, that's right. And, uh, and if you want, you can actually use the Starbucks card to get a little coffee. I know you're a very I achievement like oriented person, so we thought the coffee would fit in. Appreciate it, thank you very much. Thanks, John. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, thank you. All right, IE versus IE, Inland Empire versus Internet Explorer. Uh, so we learned a little bit about you know, District 8 and the Inland Empire. I want to welcome up uh, Joe Dominguez to talk a little bit about District 8 IT. Hey, George. How you doing? Hey, sir. Yep. We lost the All right, we lost the <laughs> microphone. We lost Mike. Mike's right there. So uh, how can that be? So for those of you uh, who are not familiar with Joe Dominguez, Joe Dominguez is the D8 IT manager. Is it on? Are you all hooked up now? Hello. Yep. All right. You're hot now. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for, uh, you know, like, like John, for helping us uh, come down here and, and hold the IT quarterly all staff meeting. I, I appreciate your attentiveness to us thank and you. your hospitality. Welcome. Welcome to District 8. Well, thank you so much, Joe. Mm -hmm. Now, I got to tell you, um, you know, I hear a lot of great things uh, about D8. Uh, not only, you know, kind of the sense of community down here, the, the IT staff, the collaboration. Uh, you've done a lot of great things down here, too. Thank you. you, know, Thank I, you. It's the staff who actually done the great things. So yet another example of leadership. <laughs> you know, I, I agree. Uh, certainly, you know, we're all one team. We don't exist. Our success doesn't happen if, if it weren't for folks that are actually doing the work. Some of the stuff I've seen you do, like I just got a tour of the iRoom. 
Yeah, that was pretty that was nice. neat. The district wanted to uh, put a night room just like the District 4 had. Okay. Uh, and with the help of the staff, you know, we were able to put uh, this innovation room together. Um, a multi-purpose uh, display. Uh, it's pretty neat. I'll give you a tour afterwards. So Fantastic. There's like three monitors in there? Three displays, 75-inch okay. displays. Uh, There's the challenge right there. <laughs> so 75, you got to be 75. Yeah. And the room looks great. Yes, yeah, so they, they spent some uh, some money too to fix up the room, the okay. uh, painting, the carpet. Uh, it looks really yeah. nice, uh, especially with the the wall of glass. Uh, yep. To look into the room, it's it's really nice. And yeah. they also have the mics hanging from the ceilings. I mean, it's, it's the you guys really did a great job with mm -hmm. with the eye room. I appreciate that. Thanks. <laughs> You know, the other thing you do is, uh, I think you build a great team, Joe. You've been here uh, a while. I mean, you actually yeah. started in the program area. You're a GIS guy? Yeah. Uh, before going into uh, supervision, yeah. was uh, with GIS for five years. Um, so I, it, it was, I really enjoyed doing that a lot. Uh, um, but um, <laughs> we get to do that. And, and then and the yeah. staff is, uh, reports yep. to me still. Yeah. That's huge. You're the only district uh, IT staff that actually have GIS. That's a rare thing. And to me, that says that the program area is very confident, right, in the IT staff's ability to deliver. And so that's why you're able to hold on to, uh, to GIS. Yeah. That's a collaboration between um, uh, construction surveys and uh, the CAD yeah. unit um, and a couple of IT staff that work together um, to put out those maps and the applications that, uh, that they use mm -hmm. here. Awesome. I, you guys work together. I think you guys all also play together, don't you, in a way? I mean, I, I, I know you're kind of a big sports junkie. I, you've run <laughs> yeah. the L.A. Marathon, I think, a couple times. I have. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, the, the staff will play golf with me. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. We, we were doing basketball for a while. Uh, wow, that's my back. Mike. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even think about that. My knee. My knee. Well, there's the hot shot there. In oh, the is basketball. he? Basketball, yeah. You, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's awesome. How much golf do you play? I try to play once a week. All right. Bring them into it. I Fantastic. Get to help me with it, but yeah. like once a week between once ten and two. Week. No, no. <laughs> so, so we can't say. And when you go yeah. play golf, I mean, you don't do things small. Do you play nine? Do you play eighteen? <laughs> How many holes do you play? You know, it's usually eighteen. Uh, okay. We have a golf course here that has some good deals, and we uh -huh. can actually play the whole day for like thirty dollars. The whole day. <laughs> So what is the whole thing? Is three rounds? Is the three rounds in one day? You're yeah, kidding me! Yeah, yeah. Wow. And they'll, they'll play with me. They'll stick with me. Three <laughs> rounds all day? Yeah. Wow, it's probably harder to follow you on the golf course than, <laughs> <laughs> than it is here. Yeah, I, it, it's a lot of fun to do that. And I'm learning. I'm not. Yep. I'm not that good. And, uh, um, They'll, they'll play with me. You're very modest, too, because I know, I know you used to be a very focused person, right? And when we've mm -hmm. talked about that and the, mm -hmm. the discipline needed to be successful. So uh, I'm Thank sure you. you're much better than, <laughs> than you say. Uh, I'll try. <laughs> All right. But speaking of staff, uh, I think uh, Ed and the guys were able to come up here and, and do a little video so we can get to know some of your folks. Yes, yes. Uh, a few people volunteered to, to uh, get on the video and probably had some more, but... Uh, I have to keep it short. <laughs> all right, all right. Love to see it. So I've been with Caltrans about 34 and a half years. I really enjoy my job. I'll probably be here for a little longer, maybe a lot longer. I've worked at Caltrans for 30 years. So you develop relationships with people, and they become part of your families. 18 years. When we're trying to reach and find a uh, solution to some problem, and we get everybody to agree, and we come with, a, with that good solution, that kind of that feels good. The newer, younger people coming in, you know, you know, hopefully I'll be able to hand off my skills to them, so they can do as good a job as I feel I have. About 12 years. You know, help each other, bring morale, and get our day going. If you really want to, there yeah, are a chance that you can go as far as you can. Five and a half years? I have a great time every day. We call it wisdom checks. It's like, you know, if I'm working on something, it's like on the tip of your tongue and you just can't remember. And it's just like, let me grab somebody, maybe they remember, and it kind of finishes your sentence for you. Caltrans IT, this is Elena. Three weeks and one day exactly. So I was like, I got a job. 
there's certainly a lot of opportunity to, to move around. The plan is to be here for 40 years. I think that's the way you max out your pension. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thanks, Joe. You know, I really love about that. I love the kind of the broad expanse from well, 34 years, right? That's fantastic to uh, to three three weeks and hope to be here 40 years. Uh, and a lot of folks kept mentioning, you know, collaboration, the wisdom checks, right? Kind of working with the team. So I, I really appreciate you being able to build that culture, right? And, and Thank you. I, somebody I think said that they love they have a great time every day. So what a great opportunity to come to a place where you can have a great time every day. It's a great bunch of employees here that, that uh, I enjoy coming and working with and uh, we have a great time. Uh, well thank you. I, I know that's very genuine so and I can see that in, in the staff when they speak about the organization. So thanks for building okay. a great thank culture. Thank you George. You bet. <laughs> All right. All right, now it's part of the agenda where we give you some updates. You know, so for myself, I'll give you some updates, uh, and then we'll go down to the division chiefs. Certainly, they've got a lot of information to share. At the end, we've got the Q and A. So the Ask George line is open. Ron, are we been getting any? No, not, not yet. All right, there's the challenge. We got a half hour left. All right, so then you got to make some up. Just no pressure. Um, so the things that I want to talk about, you know, I want to talk about three things. I want to talk about innovation campaign. You know, I want to talk about employee engagement, and then I want to talk about the customer satisfaction survey we've been doing. So uh, from the innovation campaign, you guys may or may not be aware, but Caltrans actually has an innovation platform that we've been uh, using, not IT specifically, but Caltrans. I think it's the idea bright or bright idea. I can't remember uh, which way that goes, uh, but we were able to tap into it. So within the next couple of months, we're going to launch an innovation campaign just within IT. Because I know every time I come to the districts, there's always great ideas. You know, there's great ideas about you know entering purchase orders locally. Uh, you know that we're trying to do a better job of. But I'm sure there's a lot of other great ideas. You know that we haven't heard of, and we want to he really hear from staff, right? So it's a way to crowdsource, kind of ways to make IT better. I'm sure there's great things you guys are continuing doing here in G8 that maybe other folks don't know, other districts don't know. You know, maybe there's some stuff uh, happening in D1 or D6 or. or how do we get those ideas out? And so that's the whole uh, message, that's the whole idea around the innovation program. So we're gonna launch a couple efforts uh, with NIT to gather some of these great ideas and we're gonna fund them, right? Because I, I don't wanna just gather ideas, but we're gonna find a way to kind of filter them and sort them. And then uh, the best ideas, we're gonna try to find a way to fund those so we can get those implemented. I'll tell you some of the best ideas I've had don't necessarily require money, so. You know, it's not to say you got to come up with something like buy new equipment, but it could be as simple as, you know, let's do this a different way, right? And it makes it easier for everybody. So I'm sure there's great ideas. I can't wait to see those. Uh, employee engagement. Hopefully all of you've got your annual performance reviews and evaluations. You know, I got to tell you in years past, uh, we haven't been as successful at that, but this year we got to 100%. So hopefully it gave you the opportunity to have those discussions, you know, with your manager around, you know, performance and career development and, and all of those great things. We're going to continue doing that. You know, so this year there will also be another period of time in which everybody will get their annual performance evaluation. You know, on top of that, there's uh, mandatory uh, training, right, that we may not be as successful with. Uh, certainly there's big push for cybersecurity. You guys all know that and you'll be hearing that uh, from Carl. But there's other mandatory training. Uh, Luck's going to talk a little bit about uh, training for this next fiscal year, we're increasing the allocation of training funds that are available. There's some other uh, enterprise tools that are available to everybody too, but I don't want to steal all of uh, Lux Thunder. Uh, we're running a leadership program again. We ran an internal one last year. We brought back uh, AIO, uh, that's an uh, agency information officer. They sit above the CIOs and they did some leadership development, so we're, we've got him back this year. So you'll see more investment in, uh, in your boss, right, and your leaders. And, and hopefully, you know, we'll all get, bit, get better together. Uh, the last thing, you guys may have noticed that we're doing a, kind of a 100% survey on all our heat tickets, right? I know Joe gets a bunch of questions, you know, and a lot of those are, are user error. They click, they click the wrong box, you know, I want to talk to an IT manager, but Joe's nice enough to, to field all those calls. Well, the results have been outstanding. So you guys are doing an excellent job 
well, we're going to get that information out, but I got to tell you, it really surprised me, you know, to the extent that, you know, I've even asked some of the folks collecting that information to say, how can we be this good? And, you know, he went back and uh, he took his pencil and checked it out, and, and you guys, uh, everybody out here is doing a great job. I want to say satisfaction is like uh, 80, 90 percent. It's quite high. So uh, keep up the great work on that, you know, in association with those, uh, the ticketing system heat. Mike later in the discussion is going to talk about a replacement for heat. You know, uh, the industry's kind of moved on, and we're looking at other opportunities. Uh, so this is the area we hope to do some replacement on our ticketing system. With that, I want to call Luck up. Luck Sue, how are you doing? Good. All right, Thank fantastic. You. I love your energy. That's so positive. We really need that, you know, especially an old guy like me. You know, I. My extra bag. shot of caffeine, extra sugar in the morning is all it takes. All right, fantastic. <laughs> just, just one? I drink like eight cups a day now. I need, no? Really? All right, I know. No, all right. Much. All right, don't tell, don't tell my doctor. <laughs> don't. <laughs> but in addition to not telling uh, my doctor, can you tell me kind of uh, what's going on in your division? Yeah, I'm excited to do that. So today I'm going to give you updates in terms of training and also our budget change proposals that we're working on. So. We heard you loud and clear when you guys completed your employee survey. You guys wanted more training, right? So what we did was we acquired licenses to lynda.com. Have you guys all heard about lynda.com? Yeah. yeah, it's our department's new enterprise training software and everyone will have access to it. What's great with lynda.com is an online portal with a vast catalog. They have over 3,000 courses that covers technology, business, and creative skills. So you can tailor it based on your needs and your schedule. Did you guys attend the Toolbox Tuesday talk on the topic? Still a lot of outstanding questions regarding the um, software, but pay attention to your email. The Learning and Development Office will be sending out notices in terms of instructions. One, we're going to roll it out. The plan is to roll it out this month, but the specific date to stay tuned for that information. Okay. So, but in addition to lynda.com, we also set aside, like George said, some training funds. If lynda.com does not offer you those courses that are job required, what I want you to do is work closely with your managers and supervisors. Develop a training plan. In that training plan, what we're looking for are those courses that are job required, the cost associated with those courses, the schedule where you're going to be going to training, also provide a description in terms of how you plan to apply that training to your day-to-day -day activities. Submit that training plan to your division chief to be prioritized and also to be approved. Once your division, the d division chief approves it, submit it to us. My shop will process the training request for you. You know, on behalf of the leadership team, we absolutely value continuous learning and development. We want to invest in you. One thing I want to encourage you guys, invest in yourself. Take some time each day, 15 minutes, try and learn something new so that learning becomes embedded in our day-to-day -day activities. Budget change proposal. So there's two initiatives in regards to that. The first one relates to IT class consolidation. As you guys know, CalHR mandated the IT class consolidation earlier this year, and that has a direct impact to our organization. Specifically, 227 positions, 227 of our staff were impacted. Majority of them met the minimum, the alternate range criteria, and some of those positions will require us to be uplifted in order to address the compaction issue. So, in response to that, we're requesting 1.9 million augmentation in personnel service dollars to address the cost increase. Now, if authority is granted, we'll be able to leverage the funds to retain and build a highly skilled workforce. Now, on the contrary, if we don't get approval, that's going to have a negative impact on our hiring efforts. We just met with Department of Finance last week, and it was a very good meeting, and they're very optimistic in pushing this BCP through the process. The other budget change proposal relates to hardware and software. This year, we were approved for $12 million to replace the most critical IT infrastructure equipment, an additional $2 million to hire a vendor to help us with the development of the application roadmap. Now the $12 million came with strings attached. We're not able to get the funds until the application roadmap is approved by Department of Finance and Department of Technology. So our top priority right now is complete the development of the application roadmap. 
We're targeting to complete the application roadmap spring 2019. In order to complete that, all hands are on deck, it's going to be a close collaboration across all the different divisions. So he's going to talk a little bit more about that in his presentation. So in parallel to that, what we're also teeing up is a budget change proposal that's going to allow us to have permanent ongoing augmentation of $14 million for us to refresh our infrastructure. So that's the latest, George. Well, thank you so much, Locke. And I, I want to thank you because I yeah. know we threw you in the deep end of the pool on the BCPs. So you're actually our the department's rep IT representative on the BCPs. That means when we have to meet with finance and those guys aren't the most pleasant, right? Or uh, the alleged analyst's office or if there's a potential that we have to testify, that'll be you. So I, I appreciate you stepping forward on that. I appreciate you having confidence in me. Absolutely. Looking forward to that opportunity. All right, thank you. All right, Saeed. Come on up, Saeed. How are you doing? Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, so I, I want to thank you as well, because you've become the new designated driver. I'm still holding the title. You're still I'm holding the title. That's right. Mike, you wait from getting that title back. My, Mike, <laughs> Mike getting your title? You know, um, <laughs> Uh, we had to put you in the mix because we would like to do this quarterly, right? So yes. if Mike were driving, we would do this semi-annually. So, <laughs> so I, I appreciate you driving around. And I also understand that you've, uh, you're kind of familiar with the uh, Southern California area. Yes, George. I have been in Southern California for a long time. And especially I was in San Diego area going for a school for UC San okay. Diego for a year. And been here for a lot of time. So I know a lot of friends here. Well, I, you know, I, my 15-year-old uh, is, is at the age where he's starting to look at different schools. So we came down, we looked at UC San Diego. You can actually see the ocean uh, from campus. It's a beautiful campus, campus yes, George. And uh, it has a great program in computer science and engineering. Oh. They're doing an amazing job. Yep, because, you know, I see you as more a UC Davis guy, a NorCal guy. I am. I'm a UC Davis graduate, and, um, but it was a great opportunity came up with getting a scholarship from UC San Diego for one year, so I can took the advantage of that opportunity and oh. be able to attend to that school. Fantastic. And i got to ask you, since you were only here a year, did you spend a lot of time on campus, or did you spend a lot of time at the beach? or? Well, I was at campus. <laughs> All right. I'd be at the beach, but, you know. But I'm sure you're, you're much more focused than I am. Yes. <laughs> All right. Speaking of focus, I know your organization is focused on a, a number of initiatives. Can you tell us about some of them? Of course. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm so glad to be here to see you. Uh, I want to say thank you a lot for bringing up the application roadmap discussion. It's my first agenda, and I'm going to be expand a little bit about what the application roadmap is and why we are doing this. And second, I'm going to talk about ADA website, uh, website compliance. And uh, also, third, I'm going to talk about rapid application development, so-called bimodal mode two. Let me talk about the application roadmap. What's the application roadmap is? Actually, it's just a plan, plan of our department's uh, uh, portfolio and also applications, all legacy applications that we're trying to determine how we can replace it or modernize it or put it together, integrate it together in a better solution. Either put it in an on-site environment or in a cloud-based environment. So why we are doing this? There's a two major reasons for that. Number one is we're trying to help our infrastructure division to gain access to that $12 million that Locke mentioned about it, to modernize and refresh the uh, aging infrastructure and hardware we have today. The second thing is we want to modernize all our legacy applications that we figure out in order to mitigate the risk that today we are facing with it. So there's going to be a kind of an impact to, to our operations. I will do leading this effort to working with uh, and closely and collaborating with the uh, business programs and IT partner divisions to uh, first of all identify, assess, and determine how we're going to modernize these legacy systems that we can provide a better services to our day-to-day -day business operations. The second item I'm going to talk about is ADA website compliance. 
We all know American Disability Act and also what they call Section 508, same legislative mandate, mandate allows. We have to, all public face uh, websites that we have today has to be in compliance. And we have a lot of work to do on in order to take care of it. What we have done so far, the planning is finalized and approved, and also we have uh, a training plan provided and developed that. And very soon we're going to come up, probably early October, to cover all the districts and divisions. We call train the trainer. How we comply our documents in PDF, Word, Excel, that all faces in public access. And the second thing is on website compliance, we, our uh, web uh, services team, after months of evaluations, they come up with a platform for the, what they call web content management systems. We're going to go with the Drupal to be able to organize all and standardize all our public face applications. The third and our last one is a bimodal and rapid application development. What is it? I mean, we know the technology trend these days is trying to digitize all business process. And they're going so fast. Those days that took six to nine months or a year to develop a business solution from IT, it's not going to work anymore. We need a tool and technology to less coding or even no coding to come up with quick solutions to the business process. And that's a rapid application development team is today. They're evaluating all different technologies, like Teams, uh, ThingSmart, uh, Microsoft Dynamics, Salesforce. And based on the, uh, our business, our own department business proof of concept, we're evaluating. And we are hoping by end of September, come up with the proposed solutions that meets our needs and our standards to propose to our executive members for their approval, and then we will announce it that soon. At the end, I would like to encourage and you know, everyone that who are interested in uh, collaborating and in development applications and in a fast track, what we call fast track application development. You can contact us. Let's work together. Let's to develop this solution fast and better solution to our customers and for helping our business folks. Thank you. All right, thank you, Saeed. I appreciate your, uh, thank your you. overview. Thank you. I appreciate it. I also want to, um, you know, so, some of the districts have very robust application development shops, so I really want to encourage you to reach out to Saeed as he works through uh, that bimodal evaluation. Love to hear from you. Love to leverage that. Uh, is it wisdom check? Was that the term? Well, I'd love to do wisdom check. Right? right, and yes. uh, and really hear from the districts. So reach out to Saeed. We are ready, and just please join us. And that's what I'm saying. That let's work together and collaborate. And I'm sure this is, can be done. There's no question about it. All right, thank, thank you, you so much. Appreciate thank it. You. All right, Mike Wynn. Hey, good morning, George. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Mike? I'm doing great. Thank you. Um, now, you. Uh, you're part of the trio that was able to get down to SoCal a little sooner than Carl and I were, weren't you? Yeah, we had some speed on that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, because Saeed was driving, man. So uh, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he still got the crown. I know. <laughs> but I, I apologize for not being able to make the trip with you guys. Carl and I had a meeting with Director Berman and uh, Chief Deputy uh, Chamberlain, so we weren't able to visit those other districts. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing I, I took away from uh, that was you guys uh, were able to stop and enjoy a couple of nice restaurants? You know, I, I was told that, you know, so SoCal, you know, is a great place for the foodies. So right. we took, you know, some time to visit little Saigon and uh, the international market, you know, that Sayi took us to Irvine. And we really enjoyed the food. So it was, you know, one of the highlights of our trip. Yeah, I, I think I saw a portion. It, it must have been like a 12-inch plate or 14-inch plate, man. It was just massive. And I, I wondered if it was, was just right for me. With, <laughs> I was at first. I asked. I think Lux sent it to me. I said, "Are you guys eating family style?" And she said, "No, that's just Mike's." I was like, "Oh man, yeah. that's awesome!" So yeah. you really were able to enjoy kind of local cuisine and the local culture. Absolutely, down there. it was great. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Um, you know, in addition to kind of get out to the districts and spending time uh, with the folks, I know you're also. Uh, 
getting other stuff accomplished, as you are, Mike. You know, I may, I may give you a hard time about your driving, but I know when it comes time to operations, you're full speed ahead. Uh, what are some of the things that you're cranking through? All right. So, um, uh, first of all, for those of you who um, are new to Caltrans, uh, my name is Mike Wynn. I am in charge of the IT infrastructure for the department. I also play the role of the chief technology officer. Um, so thanks for the question, George. Um, uh, the infra uh, infrastructure management division, we're behind the scene making sure that, you know, the information highway that we are responsible for, um, um, they are up, they are running, they are healthy, and they basically help transport all of our application and data. So I want to take a, a brief moment to shout out to all of my staff in IMD for your hard work and dedication. Um, in making sure that the infrastructure is there to support all the applications that say ye and all the districts as well as um, uh, the data that we are responsible for um, is accessible um, and is supporting our business operations. So thank you very much. Uh, there are three things that I want to talk about today. Uh, the first is about heat replacement. Uh, second, uh, a couple of key efforts that we're doing to support uh, SB1 and lastly, I want to wrap it up by um, giving you more insight in terms of some of the WAN upgrades um, that we are doing behind the scene. So let's talk about heat replacement. You all know that heat is our ticketing system, right? It's been around, but it has limitations. So what we're doing is we're trying to um, uh, gather all of our business and technical requirements so that we can choose a more robust, modernized, and uh, application that we can uh, better make use of to classify our uh, service requests, our incidents, uh, doing changes to our systems and releases for applications and so on so that we can better serve the business programs. Uh, where we are right now is that we have, uh, I believe, five to six work groups that have been identified and um, uh, for each work group, there's a lead, and I encourage you to participate, to reach out to the lead, uh, if they haven't already uh, reached out to you, uh, to be part of that work group so that you can specify requirements, 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 so that we can do a better job when we go out and do a market survey, determine which um, solution would be uh, best fit our needs before we implement it. The timeline for this, uh, between now and November, uh, we're going to be finalizing, vetting uh, the requirements, and we're going to go out and do the procurement, hopefully somewhere in early um, um, January, February time frame. And then once we onboard um, um, uh, the system integrator, uh, we will look to 12 to 18 months to implement uh, the solution that we choose um, in terms of um, uh, ITSM. IT um, service manager. Uh, for those who, of you who are not familiar with um, this terminology, um, lynda.com offers ITIL training. ITIL stands for in IT um, Infrastructure, Information Technology Infrastructure Library. And all of these things that are behind the scene, processes and procedures that are automated, it's going to help us IT you know, professionals to do our job better in terms of in taking the service requests from our clients, tracking them, and then making sure that we deliver those services that are asked from us uh, from start to finish. And that's what ITSM is all about. Okay? Um, I'd like to move on and talk about what we're doing in um, the infrastructure management division to su support SB1. There are many things that we're doing, but two things that are standing um, out for me are uh, the first thing is. Um, as we onboard new employees to do projects that are SB1 related, uh, programs are hiring new employees. And so that creates workload for desktop support. You got to roll out, you know, more desktop, more laptops. You probably get more calls with the newbies, right, uh, as they get uh, um, acclimated in our environment. So that creates a level of workload. And your managers and supervisors have been doing a great job in letting me uh, and George know that, hey, we need more help. So in an effort to really uh, help you guys out to shoulder more uh, workload that's coming our way, we have set money aside to allow um, ourselves to hire student assistants. 
okay, um, to basically deal with some te temporary workload that is coming our way. So that is one of the key things that uh, we're doing to um, assist the district IT operations in dealing with a workload. All I'm asking for is um, the IT managers and supervisors put together the duty statements for which they expect the students to perform. And then once they submit those to me, well, we're going to review them, and we're going to basically authorize them to proceed. Right? So the hiring process probably take within two weeks or so to onboard a student. And um, I look forward you know, to work with all the managers in suit to do just that. The second thing that we're doing to help out um, the department in terms of preparedness for onboarding new employees, as you all know, Software licenses and PCs you know, are something that each and every employee needs to perform their work, right? For those who are office workers, right? So, um, as you may know, we got onto Office 365 uh, over a year ago. Uh, yeah, over a year ago, almost two years. And we have to pay for, in advance, the number of licenses that we need for our employees to conduct work. Well, we had some headroom to deal with, you know, some onesies and twosies um, in terms of new. But when we onboard uh, 700 employees, new authorized employees in COS and 400 in maintenance, well, that's a big chunk of licenses that we don't have in terms of headroom for growth. So what I have done is um, I've been working with the program uh, budget folks to inform them that, hey, we need licenses and you all need to step up to pay for those. And the conversation has been uh, very positive. I already met with Keith Duncan from COS, and he has committed to pay for COS portion. Next week, I'm planning to meet with the maintenance people to do the same. So that's, that's the thing that we're doing to prepare ourselves for software licensing so that it doesn't you know, create undue stress on staff when they get a phone call, a service request, and say, oh, I can't provision new software for new employees because we haven't planned, we haven't informed, and we haven't educated our program. We're doing that. Okay, so thank you. Last but not least, WAN upgrade. Um, as part of the modernization effort, standardization effort, and simplification efforts that we've been talking about within IMD, uh, it's, it is a continuous improvement effort that we're doing. So not only that, you know, Luck talked about hardware, um, uh, infrastructure hardware refresh. We're doing more than that. Um, we have our WAN infrastructure in place for over a decade. It is what it is today for over 10 years. So, you know, the technology is demanding more capacity on the network. So what we are doing and have successfully completed for several sites already, um, we, we are doing two things in the WAN upgrade area. One, we're um, upgrading all district offices connections to the backbone from whatever the, the capacity is up to one gigabit per second. Uh, for many district offices, large or small, that is more than a 500% uh, 700% increase in terms of capacity. So in transportation technology, we're adding a lot more lanes on the freeways, you know, for the applications to basically write on. Secondly, and most importantly, our backbone right now, is as they sit, they're sitting on uh, a one gigabit per second uh, backbone, right? So we have submitted Form 20s, not only for the uh, district offices, circuit upgrade from whatever they are to one gig, but we also submitted Form 20s to upgrade our backbone circuits from one gig to 10 gigs. So I got a status report from John this morning. There are three things that um, um, he reported. The routers have to be purchased with new modules to um, terminate the 40 gig um, connection, up to the 40 gig connection. So it will definitely support the 10 gigs. Um, as well as the routers you know, for the district offices to terminate those new circuits at one gig. So those are happening. We got District 4 done. We got District 3 TMC done and um, more to come. Uh, as you know, you know, the telco companies, they, they have their own pace, just like mine, you know, when we go on the freeway. Um, they are even slower than I am, right? George always teased me about, you know, being slow when I, it comes to driving. Man, that's hard to believe. Telco's uh, slower? <laughs> the telcos are much slower. Their timeline is, you know, 45 days to 60 days and sometimes even more. So that's where we're at with the WAN upgrade, and um, I hope to basically update you guys more in the next quarterly all-staff meeting. All right, thank you. All right, thanks, Mike.
got some big projects yeah, on your plate. Thanks, George. All right, Carl, come on up. Yeah, bring your Steph, I really like that. Holy smokes. Jump up there. The energy. Yeah. Yeah. You're so excited to come up and engage. Right. Hmm? Well, certainly, uh, the security program has been making vast improvements, I think, to the cybersecurity profile, and rightfully so. When you look at transportation as an industry, that's one of the main things folks are worried about. You know, when you talk about autonomous vehicles, right, vehicle, vehicle, vehicle infrastructure, folks are always worried. Well, what happens if that car gets hacked, right? If somebody takes control of that car and all of a sudden they weaponize it, right, or they do something else with it. Um, I know for you too, you've got a big month coming up and uh, that's October because October is Cybersecurity Awareness Month. You know, I always think of October as, as Halloween. I always think of October as trick or treat time. Uh, you know, I, I can only imagine, Carl, you've got some tricks or some treats uh, kind of up your sleeve, so to speak. Can you tell us about that? Absolutely. Thanks, George. And uh, good morning, everyone. Great to be here. And uh, as always, to talk about my personal favorite topic, cybersecurity. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is the Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Um, the parrots are gone. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the Cybersecurity Awareness Month, we do ramp up and we, and we get uh, ready for this uh, every year and this year is no exception. In terms of education, it's a way that we can help uh, change the culture of cybersecurity at Caltrans. And really in IT, we have to be transformational as well because we are going to lead the charge when it comes to transfer changing transportation. Um, in terms of making it more digital and more connected with connected vehicles as George was talking about. Cyber security is a big part of that and we need, in IT, we need to lead in that effort. And to that end, we recently sent out a cybersecurity phishing email to all of you and everyone, uh, all of IT. And of the around uh, 600 uh, people who we phished, uh, we had about a 17% a uh, click rate. And, and frankly, that's not good enough. Uh, we should be better than the enterprise. Last year when, when, when we fished the enterprise, we were at about 20%. So in IT, we should be, we should be well out in front of the rest of the organization. Um, and on top of that, it's, the, it's the, uh, the folks who went on to provide me with their credentials that are, is of the most concern. So it was the email that said, you know, your account might be expiring and it took you to a page that's not at all related to Caltrans and people still in IT entered their account and password. And it was interesting, it was about 30 people who did that, 30 IT staff. Of those, for some strange reason, 16 of them were all in a single uh, state job classification, the Info, Infotech Range D. So for some reason, uh, that's a, you're, you're particularly prone to providing creds uh, and falling for phishing campaigns if you're in that job class, I don't know why. So we will be sending out additional phishing campaigns, uh, but in the meantime, if you're one of the 29, we're going to uh, take you back through the cybersecurity awareness training and have, give you the opportunity to uh, retake that training. Again, you can skip ahead on the training if you, know the, if you think you know the answers, and if you get it right, you can, you can test out quickly, um, but it'll be an opportunity to sharpen your skills on that. So the messaging there is around uh, security, cybersecurity here is going to probably feel different uh, you know, we talk about the trade-off between convenience and security, and convenience uh, it may uh, feel different uh, when we talk about greater security. Privileged access management is the uh, tool that we're looking at buying. We finished our developing our requirements internally on the security team for a tool. We're going to be working with uh, Mike and IMD and, and all of you on making sure we've got all the requirements nailed down for the capability to check in, check out passwords, and go to a single console and do multi-factor authentication before you escalate privileges. Right now, we have laps in place from Microsoft working with uh, IMD and Mike's folks. Uh, it is the poor man's version of PAM, and I get that there's some pain around that, and we can talk about that more if you'd like. I, th I think we're running a little long, so I'm, I'm going quick. And uh, multi-factor authentication, uh, maybe just to take a quick moment and say thanks to uh, you all and to everyone for making this a uh, huge success. We've rolled out 4,000 uh, YubiKeys physical tokens. And to date, we've had approximately only about 70 after hours phone calls. So really a huge success. Um, it was really uh, great that we could tell uh, Lori Berman in our, in our meeting that we were having those kinds of stats in IT. It shows that we're really out in front on the technology. 
Um, I am announcing today, though, we, we uh, gave you the ability, if you have a state-issued phone, to use the soft key, the Duo app, or the physical YubiKey token. Uh, we're finding that there's no business need for you to have those two methods, and um, within IT, we'll drink our own champagne first, to use George's terminology, and we'll ask that you return the physical token if you have a state-issued phone and switch over exclusively to the application. Um, they're about 50 bucks each, and so it's good that we get those back and, and we can repurpose them. So turn them in if you got them now. Okay, anybody? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Carl. I can tell you, um, you know, on that physical token, I've gone exclusively to the cell phone. It's just a lot easier. I always have my cell phone, my work cell phone with me anyway. I hit the button, I get my code, I, I log in, and then we can reuse. Oh, you, you may have your oh, first. There you go. There you go. Thank you. So he's leading the way. All right, there's one. Actually, is that the second one? That's the second one. All so right. Yours was the first. Yours right. number two. Starting the, starting the title wave. More to come. But, yeah. you know, it's just so easy to use that Duo app. Uh, so I use that all the time. I mean, it's just, um, it gives us an opportunity, too, because I know there's some program folks who've been losing the keys, and we can repurpose those out to the program folks. Uh, I want to thank you for everything you're doing on security. Like I said, it's huge in transportation now, and you're really pushing that envelope or pushing the edge, if you will. Uh, so thank you for that, Carl. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. All right. Now, this is the part where it's a little dynamic because, uh, you know, we are running long. And so, Ron, I know we got a, we got a number of questions earlier, but I think I just want to take two, right, because I want to let the, the folks go home for the DA folks. We're going to stay. Certainly after lunch, we'll have the opportunity to, to engage. Uh, so we can certainly do that. Or if you think there's a question for the audience that would be meaningful for all of them, uh, maybe I'll take one or two of those. But Ron, what do we have? Great, George. Yeah, this question comes from District 8, our oh. local staff here. Right here? Why, did they hit you right here in the, you at the bet. time? That's you awesome. Bet. Our customers requested new smartphones and tablets a few oh. months ago, but have not heard if they are approved. Can you provide us an update? so we can provide our customers a response. Yeah, so unfortunately, they are not approved, right? But uh, the great news is I'm, I'm hoping in time they will be, and some of the, some of the background on that. Certainly, uh, when the governor came in, he looked at the number of devices, not just at Caltrans, but across all the departments. And he made the request to, uh, to pull back some of those devices, and, and all departments, Caltrans included, dutifully complied with that request. Uh, so over the course of this administration, he's kind of loosened up those guidelines. Uh, so he's delegating some responsibility in transportation. That means CalSTA is the organization that gets to approve those requests. We do have a request in with uh, CalSTA, and uh, they're currently reviewing it, I think, in time, right, after they've uh, kind of cleared their plates and they had time to, to look at it a little more closely. There'll be opportunity. If I had to bet, right, and I'm not uh, supporting that, but if I... <laughs> If I had a bet, I would say probably sometime in the December time frame, we'll have some opportunity to bring those devices in. <laughs> it, it just makes a lot of sense in this day and age of, you know, that's where all the compute is happening. Plus, you know, there's fires, there's other stuff, there's first responders. So uh, I, I'm hopeful in time we'll be able to expand our footprint on those mobile devices. Great. Thank you, George. We have an additional question. Uh, I think, Luck, uh, this might, one, might be for you. Okay, and, and so let's just take probably one or two more, Ron. Okay, great. Um, this question comes from District 3. It okay. um, says, that we are hearing that lease agreements are on hold pending the election in November uh, for SB1. Um, can you provide a status on that? Absolutely. So you guys all know with SB1, there's a lot of hiring. In fact, last year the department submitted a BCP to request additional funding so that we can go out and acquire more spaces in anticipation of the massive hiring. That, ba that BCP actually got turned down. Instead, what was imposed on us was a DGS audit. So we have been partnering with DGS to look at the existing space needs, right, and also look at the existing spaces available. So prior to us taking out a new lease, what DGS wants us is maximize the current space first, make sure they're fully occupied before we take out a new lease. The DGS audit is ongoing right now. They're anticipating closing that out by probably spring of 2019. Well, thank you, Luck. Mm -hmm. Since we're out of time, George, uh, we'll make sure we answer the rest of these uh, online. Thanks, Ron. Yeah, anybody who sent in a request certainly is going to get a response. I, and Ron, thank you for helping to manage and coordinate those responses. Uh, I know we're going to get a shot to talk later again. Is there anything uh, here you think we need to bring up that the folks at home may be interested in? All right, I'll get you guys later in the afternoon. The last, the last question is, uh, can you guys guess where the next location is? Next stop? 
Uh, some folks have guessed Gotham, but we can't really get that out of state travel worked out. I wish I could. Any ideas? Yeah. It's actually Sacramento. So, you know, coming into the holidays, that's our next quarterly. You know, I'd like to uh, keep the division chiefs close to home and really keep Ed and his crew close to home. Those guys actually did the travel on Labor Day, so thank you, Ed. Uh, they always do a great job, and, uh, you know, I would say if they can make us look good, they can make anybody look good. So thank you all for tuning in. We'll look for you again in, at the next quarterly IT all staff meeting. I hope you uh, both enjoyed yourself and you, you found it informative today. So thank you all. <laughs>